Thank you. So I don't, I don't think this talk has to be very long because I already said a fair amount of it during the, the meditation practice, but you know me, I might wander. Um, I, I think, thank you, Cassie, I'll continue, love you. I think um, it can be important to, I think given the way that the Western mind works, meditation often gets taught from the feminine side of meditation, um, which I think is great. It's, it's important um, because I think that feminine side is neglected. I'm not talking about women and men here. I'm talking about sort of broad categories of, of ways of being, right? That just happen to be classified as feminine and masculine or yin and yang, we could say, if you wanted. Um, and it's very powerful for most of the West to learn to let go of control, to learn to be more surrendered, to learn to be more accepting. These have incredibly healing powers. But ultimately what is being taught is the balance between the masculine and the feminine. And so you may find your meditation practice losing some of its masculine energy, or you might find that you're already a person who's too surrendered <laughs> or too accepting, right? And the meditation practice might not be helping you and you don't know why. I think the word courage is a useful one to use to start to touch into some of the the masculine energy in, in acceptance. Acceptance is a very strong thing to do. It takes a lot of strength. So you may be practicing it at first, by what feels like releasing your strength. And in some sense, this is right. So it's kind of like, this is what comes to mind. There's, there's someone's been in a car accident and the car is flipped over and they're in pain and they're in danger. And you need to get them out of the car, but they're so scared, they can't get their hands off the wheel, right? They're just holding on for dear life because it was so terrifying. And so the first thing you need that person to do is to relax and let go. Otherwise, nothing will happen. And so in our life, most of us have our claws gripped around huge chunks of our life. Just I'm holding on to this and this and this. And it's not always the good things. In fact, it's many times we're clawing on, holding on to the things that are most difficult for us. Because it feels safer, just like the person in the car accident. It just they they're 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 not thinking clearly, so it just feels safer to hold on tight, even though hey, we got to get out of here. It's probably a better example, something to do with heights, where you have to you have to walk along a very narrow edge cliff to get to where you need to get to. If you don't let go of where you're going, you'll never get there but it's scary to let go. So that's how it feels to most of us. When we start meditating, there's things that are being asked to release that are holding on very, very tightly. But meditation is not asking you to be a wet noodle where your muscles no longer function, right? 
When I say do nothing at the end of the meditation, I don't want you to release your bladder into your pants, right? <laughs> Just to give a crude example, right? They're still doing this. You can stay upright, right? You can, and <clears throat> do nothing is truly the instruction because what we learn to do is trust our strength. I can let go of the steering wheel because I'm strong enough to claw myself out of this car. I can let go of the railing because I'm strong enough to face this narrow path I have to walk through. So at first, when meditation, we practice acceptance the normal way by saying, hey, I'm going to focus on this narrow part of my life, like my breath, very narrow, right? My narrow, very narrow part of my life. And I'm going to practice letting go here. I'm going to practice unreleasing my grip here. As we do that, we have to... To stay with that, we have to start to let go of our grip in other areas as well. But it's a little bit indirect at first. Because it's like, stay with the breath, stay with the breath. The same thing with courage. You can start in a kind of indirect way. Ultimately, courage is just the true facing of reality. Ultimately, there's no difference, right, than acceptance. But the way we can practice courage is much like with the breath where we slow things down and we narrow things down. We can practice courage by picking very small things and preparing ourselves for their scariness, acknowledging their scariness. See that the acknowledging of the scariness is itself the beginning of courage. So this is what we did at the beginning of the meditation there. And we can do the same thing with just our breath, right? We can narrow courage down to just the breath. If I don't want to sit today and focus on my breath, why? Am I willing to face that why? Am I just willing to face that why? I'm willing to feel the feeling that doesn't want me to focus on that breath. We don't have to do it all at once. We can prepare for that, right? We go, okay. In order to focus on my breath, I'm going to have to acknowledge today that there is something scary about that, something uncomfortable about that. This is where it's just, it's, it's just another flavor to put into your meditation. There's just a flavor of our normal teaching 
that we're going to accept that sometimes, and, and also there's there's an aspect of we're going to relax and, and, and maybe it's going to feel good in meditation. I know people who sat with me maybe don't feel that, you know, that's, I'm, I'm not exactly that kind of teacher, but right, we're going to, we, we're going to get lovey-dovey and we're going to get flowy. And sometimes that can just ignore the fact that it's scary. Much better to face that from the beginning and prepare for it. Prepare to meet the discomfort. And this is different than saying, I'm going to meditate to go find discomfort and I'm going to defeat it. And people do that. That's a fine. There's usefulness in that. That is also uh, that is a masculine way of meditating. But that's different than courage. Courage is the knowing what you're afraid of and facing it. And we don't always know what we're afraid of, but if we're afraid, then what we're afraid of is the unknown, right? And so we face that. We turn to what we're afraid of right now and we face that. It doesn't mean we go off on a journey to find it. We can do that too. That's a whole other way of living life. But the courage begins in the present moment Why don't I want to feel this? Why don't I want to see this? Why don't I want to do this activity? I'm going to turn and look at that question. I am strong enough to see what I'm scared of. And we bring that energy into our sit, or we bring that energy into anything else we want to do that's scary for us. I'm scared of this interview I'm going to go on. I'm scared of this doctor's appointment I'm going to go on. I'm scared of what my partner will think of me, or whatever it is. You go, I can face the fear. Facing the fear is different than facing the thing. The thing we're scared of is not the fear. The thing we're scared of is the thing we're scared of. And then there's the fear. We face the fear. That allows us to face the thing eventually. So that's where see people say, well, it's courageous. I'm scared of this thing. I'm going to go do it. Yes, there's, there's courage in there. It has to be somewhere in there. But in many ways, you're running away from the fear when you do that. Many of us will, those of us who are that kind of person who's going to jump in, will actually be trying to ignore our fear, jump over our fear, skip past our fear, override our fear aggressively, right? And sometimes we have to do that to learn where our fear is. That's fine. There's no perfect way of doing this. But ultimately, that's not where courage resides. Courage resides in going, I am scared. Here it is. Here's the fear. Here's how it feels in my body. Here's what it puts in my head. Now I see my fear. Now I face my fear. That is strength. And the thing I want to give you here is that you can add into that meditation that strength. You see, you could be, there is a kind of 
there's a danger of a victimhood in the way we do meditation sometimes. I have this terror, this fear, this insecurity, and I'm just, I'm just going to surrender to it. And if you use that word properly, then that's fantastic. But there can also be a sense of not really facing it by surrendering, by the sense of, oh, I just have to let this The core of most of our fears is that we won't be able to handle what the thing the thing we're scared of, that it will kill us in some sense, right? actually kill us or destroy us. Sometimes when we surrender in meditation, we may be saying to ourselves, well, I guess it doesn't matter if I'm killed or destroyed. And although that's true in some very metaphysical sense, that's really not the energy of acceptance. The energy of acceptance is, I love living and I'm afraid this is gonna kill me. That both exist at the same time. That's, that's the energy of existence. facing that fear head on, not pretending that you don't love living or whatever it is. And yes, as we face that fear, those, the desire structure of our mind changes. Living comes to mean something deeper and broader. But it requires first the courage to accept the conflict inside of you. Do you understand what I'm saying? We can't surrender past the conflict. We have to surrender into the conflict. That's what courage is. One of the definitions of enlightenment is to have no internal contradiction. And so we may think to ourselves, ah, smartly, I'm going to have no internal contradictions. I'm just going to surrender to everything that's happening so there's no contradictions, right? I'm not fighting anything. I'm not fighting anything. And there's great power in trying that because you'll learn a whole bunch because it's so opposite of our normal way of moving. But the real magic is in surrendering to the contradiction. Yes, I feel a contradiction inside of me. The world is like this and I want it to be like that. I am courageous enough to face that right now I want a different world than I have. That takes courage. You know, Buddhism has this term that the, the middle path that the Buddha used a number of ways that that's interpreted but when we talk about these things we're always not on the middle path that's a way of putting this Lao Tzu called it the way and the one who knows does not speak the way the one who knows the way does not speak the way the one who speaks the way does not know the way he said why well because the words never get the middle path. So here I am talking about courage and it is too masculine, but there's also something too feminine in the way we talk about acceptance. The middle path is, the, is, is this present, this perfect presence with everything inside of us. And courage can be a nice balance. The idea of courage, the idea of strength, the idea of going to face what your life is made of right now. And that you can handle it. You can handle facing what your life is like. It's a good thing to, good energy to add into your practice.
a way of putting this is you are not at the mercy of your life. You are your life. It is yours to create. You are creating it. Not with our normal small doer, but with our awareness and our attention. You are not at the mercy of any of the experiences but you have the power and strength to face all of your experiences. If that makes sense. Okay. That's it for today. Love anyone who is watching on Facebook or on YouTube. Uh, come to the Zoom group if you wanna ask questions. Uh, this is a donation class. If you're on YouTube, the donation information is below. If you're on Facebook, you can find it somewhere. You can DM me if you want.